Helmet of the night are quiet. Now with my adventuring equipment complete, my brigandine, my gambeson, my back scabbard and great sword, I shall take on any task. Nothing shall catch me unawares. I shall... no, ah! What are you doing? This is my home now. What do you mean it's your home? It's very comfy and very well built. I like it. Well, you know, the, you, they are well built. They're actually really, really strong. There's a lot of engineering that goes into barrels. Mm, mm. You should make a video on them sometime. That's a good idea. Mm. I should. All right, I'm going home now. Goodbye. Greetings, I'm Shad, and uh, I'm here to talk about why barrels are awesome. More awesome than people realise. There's actually a lot of science and engineering that goes into these things, and you start to see why we've used them for more than hundreds of years. It might even be more than thousands of years. Barrels are phenomenal, and they are definitely underappreciated for how impressive they actually are. All the science kind of benefits and the reasons why, the way they're made, it's really interesting. And that's what we're going to be getting into in this video. Barrels! Get back in your barrel! Okay. So the first question really is, why barrels? Because there are other things, other types of containers or storage objects that you can put things in like sacks or bags, things like that. Now, you, you see some deficiencies already when you look at other mediums. For instance, sacks, they're not that sturdy. They can get holes in them. And they obviously have a weight limit where if you get too much weight, they can just burst out of the bottom. They're a bit harder to pick up and move around because there's nothing solid to hold on to. And so sacks and bags have some issues. In fact, we do much better when we store certain things in solid containers. The other big problem with sacks and bags is not really waterproof. I mean, you can make watertight uh, leather, you know, types of containers, but they're not gonna hold large amounts of liquid because liquid can get really, really heavy. So that- My sack's waterproof. <laughs> yes, Oz will be in that barrel the whole video. I can't get him out, I've tried. Uh, he just really appreciates barrels. Stay away, all of you, it's my barrel. But I appreciate barrels too. So, transporting liquids, hence why barrels have stereotypically stored wine a lot, but of course not only wine, heaps of stuff, anything like from grains to apples to anything you'd want. They are basically the greatest storage device history in my opinion. And so back in the day, before we used barrels, one of the ways that we stored types of liquids was in pots. Well, not necessarily pots, but it are like ceramic containment vessels obviously have a limit because they're not nearly as strong. So wood has some excellent properties because it's very strong, but it's also flexible, okay? It can take a bit of a beating and not shatter. It's not to say it's, you know, impervious, but wood is a phenomenal material to try and make a vessel out of. But if you wanted to make something, a container out of wood, how would you go about it? What shape would you adopt? Well, there's a reason why barrels are round. There's actually a lot of reasons why. And they get so many benefits. Now, I am not an engineer, but I have a background in architecture, actually. My dad's an architect and I worked as a client contract manager for a building firm and stuff. And so I learned basic things about load bearing points and certain types of structural integrity. And just on my surface level, I'm seeing when I see barrels, I see a lot of science and a lot of benefits. So one reason why you would want to go with a circle over anything ah, else. Ah, it's quite Shut it's up! Quite... Ah, heavy. A cylindrical type of uh, containment vessel comes with some really interesting benefits. For one, whenever you put material in, water or anything that has no structure in it, it's gonna fall down, but the weight is gonna try and push the, uh, the buildup of material to the sides, okay? Having a spherical container is really useful then because when you put something in, it pushes on the sides in a perfectly uniform way where there's no greater amount of buildup of force on one area as opposed to another. Generally, in most cases, especially with fluids like that, there's gonna be a uniform level of pressure pushing on the outside. Contrast that to say a square, if you had like a crate, okay, and you put something like that in, 
Well, it's going to push on the sides unevenly, so much so that the actual sides of the square are going to start to bow out. So cylindrical containment vessels like a barrel already have a massive leg up. In fact, I can kind of demonstrate the point I was making before with apples. And so these apples are fairly stable, but as soon as you start to stack them up high and weight starts to press down, watch which direction the apples want to go in when I push down. They get pushed to the sides. And the more weight that goes down, the more pressure gets pushed onto the sides as well. And so, as I mentioned, a cylindrical vessel works much better because of the even force. Barrels actually have a huge leg up in, in the, into this regard, specifically looking at the outside pressure, but also an inwards facing pressure as well. We'll get there. But before I want to get there, I want to then address more on the idea of it being round versus say a crate, because a crate is much more difficult to make watertight. Now it doesn't matter if you're storing things like apples, no. right? Because apples aren't a liquid. No. And uh, you know, grains and other things like that, they can go in and uh, they'll be fine. But when it comes to liquids, they push out on the sides just like other things, except they can seep through the cracks. And this is where you need the vessel to be watertight. And barrels, by being cylindrical, are able to achieve that so much easier than nearly any other shape. If you look at crates and things like that, what, where's the pressure? What's holding them together? You would need to make it so airtight and then the nails, it's prone to problems. And because of the uneven forces that would be pushing out on the sides, it would force open cracks. The way barrels work specifically, the outward pressure actually can help assist it become more watertight than if it didn't have that outwards pushing pressure. Because it's the outward pressure and there's an inwards facing pressure, you might be able to figure out what I'm starting to allude to. It's these, you know, you know, these round things. I'll get to them. That helps a barrel adopt a surprisingly strong structure, far stronger than you might assume. So much so that do you know you can actually make a barrel without using any nails at all? And that, that I guess this is the fruits of my labor's shed. I'm serious about that. You can make a barrel without using any nails at all. So it's all about pressure, but also there is some very specific and uh, fine and exact kind of geometry that uh, you get. It's not too hard. People are able to figure it out. But if you technically had the wood lengths of timber, okay, just, you know, mill lengths of timber, an ax and rope, you could technically make a barrel without any nails. So what you might be able to figure out where I'm getting at here is uh, see these bits of timber that are lined up. If you have a look, you actually see the lengths of timber. These are bits of timber stacked all one against another. Now, when they're straight, they have a bit of an oval shape. They're actually made specifically so they'll curve in. And I'm going to talk about this inwards curve because, again, this is where we get to some of the really interesting science and engineering in genius, all right, of the barrel. But before we get there, okay, so they're made like that, and then they're held together by pressure, okay? And in the modern day, we use these metal loops. Now, there are probably specific words for what these individual things are called, like the holes in front of barrels. They're called the bung hole. I call it a Wait, why, no, not my, not my one though, not my one, not my one. That's disgusting, Oz, you bung hole. So are there specific names? Maybe, I don't think I want to know the other specific names. It's just, I've got bunghole. I can only imagine what the other things are named. Um, all right, so these loops and rings, okay? Back in the day, we didn't use metal. We actually used wood or rope. This is where we get to the important shape. Barrels have an outward shape. This is really important because by having this outward shape like this, when you put something on top and you pull it down, you are pulling all those bits of timber inwards, creating pressure. You know, so, so then the timber, of course, is resisting it, it's pushing outwards, then you have the ropes pushing inwards. And this resistant kind of balance, outwards and inwards pressure, creates tremendous structure. But it also means you can get really tight. So tight, in fact, that the seams on these bits of wood get pressed together really hard. And this is where the advantage comes in wood, because wood can actually, they're, they're, even if the seam isn't perfect, if there's just like these little tiny cracks, you can actually force those cracks together and get the wood to kind of compress. You can soak the wood, which gets the 
timber, the, the fine kind of grains to expand a bit, all right, but it also makes it a bit more malleable and you can really push those cracks together. So after you soak it, one of the other methods, and I've seen this done in the modern day, they have the kind of round barrel, which is no top or bottom on it, and they put it over a little fire to dry out the insides. And this expanding and contracting and just manipulating the wood can cause the wood to then just fit together and make these seams in between the bits of wood completely watertight. And so already you can see the utility of having this outwards curve. But this outwards curve on the barrel, like you get all these other benefits from it as well. If I turn this barrel sideways and put it on the ground, uh, shut up you baby! You're making it unbalanced, but hey, get, it, get in your barrel! Get in! Get in! So, uh, do you see how the barrel kind of has this upwards curve, okay? This is forming an arch. Now arches in architecture are really, really strong because when you push down on an arch, it distributes the weight to the sides. And then because the sides are held together so strongly by these, you know, side straps, it creates a really stable structure. Like, I reckon I could jump on this no. and it won't break. No, don't do it, not my home, not my home. You're, no, 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 the barrel will be fine. You might not be. No. Okay. No. Ah. 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 So I could, hey, I'm balancing pretty well on this. I could, let's see, I could jump on this like quite a lot, right? And it's, it's not gonna break, okay? Now, if I was standing on one of these strips of wood, stop rocking at us! <laughs> <laughs> you bastard. He's <laughs> getting his revenge. If I was standing on one of these strips of wood by himself, right, without this upwards curve, it would snap under my weight, okay? And if I like even try and step on one foot, and localize my weight on a small surface area, so I would essentially be able to fit on one of these single strips of wood, I'll be able to bust through it. Ah, boy! There is, of course, other supporting structural elements for it to be able to support my weight. Because the, um, the timbers, when they're side by side, okay, they have like an inwards cant, the pressure. So if we come in close, right, we're gonna see that there is a single strip of wood right on the top here. This is the seam line here, okay? If I push down really tightly here, it's actually being supported by the other strips of wood because it's on an inwards angle like this. So it's getting sideways support. And then when I push down, it's got all the sideways support here. And the arch technically wants to cave in, but for it to cave in, these side parts would need to be able to move, but they're held so tightly together by these things, it creates such incredibly strong structure. Like really, this structure Ow. is so, like, like I, I, they're really strong. This outwards curve on the barrel creates another really interesting benefit and feature. And it's that when you put them on their side, you can actually transport them. Now, first of all, with it just being round instead of say a crate, again, like barrels, right? We still use them in the barrel, even if like not always wood, we still technically use barrels a lot, like, you know, oil barrels and things like that. And one of the advantages of, again, a cylindrical storage device, so when you want to move them, you just put them on their sides and roll, just like that. They could, this could be like, this could have so much weight in it that normally I wouldn't be able to drag it, okay? Sliding on the ground, or I wouldn't be able to pick it up. But because it's round, it doesn't take too much effort. Even if it's got some weight in it, like this one here, right? <laughs> and you can actually get in there. Stop it's complaining. Even if it's got a significant amount of weight, you can still get it on its side and roll it around surprisingly easy. Now, one of the other advantages is <laughs> to the, to the uh, side, right? Is that when it is on its side, it's resting on the center. And so that means turning it is really, really easy because it's got a pivot point. And so I can just turn it around just like this. <laughs> And then rolling it, again, it's got a single contact point. And so if this was completely flat, sometimes it can get caught on an edge and might want to turn and it's hard to roll. But this, you can roll it really, really easily. Like, look at this. Ah, <laughs> 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 stop it! <laughs> you can have the bow back. <laughs> Just need a breather. Skirmison's warm and hot. But see, I was moving a lot of weight around before, right? And um, imagine 
just trying to move the weight of a barrel and a full grown, you know, male, just dragging on the ground. Imagine if this was in a crate, try and move it. But because a barrel has such optimized, you know, shape and everything, I can actually end up moving around. Hey, you're alive. What happened? Did nothing, nothing. Just went for a sleep. Nothing, go nothing back. bad. I'm an excellent employee who I do not abuse his, em his employer, employee, employees, employees. So barrels allow you to move around weight by yourself, much greater weights than you could ever do if it was in near here. Like imagine if this was a sack. You're like, what option do you have? Just drag, right? So again, barrels are awesome. I think I learned something about barrels today. Oh, you did? How's that? They might seem cool on the outside, but when you're inside them, it's different. I disagree. They're great for transporting dwarves. So I've been told. Mm. And hobbits. Yeah, and hobbits. And they can possibly be used as a flotation device. Yeah. Uh, we know if you're sealed in, but if it's not sealed in, like what you get there. But when you treat them as a rotation device, <laughs> it sucks. All right, you can get back in now. Look, I have a choice. <laughs> You wanted to stay in there. But I wanted to get out 10 minutes ago. Bad luck. Well, like, let's just try and summarize again. They have tremendous structure, all right? You can technically make them even without nails. Uh, nails are like, these actually have some nails. So if we have a look around here, um, you'll see just like a little nail there and a little nail. That's all that's holding these in place. A lot of it is just pressure and friction. But with ropes holding, you know, the ropes down, stuff like that, you, would, you need to tighten them regularly enough. Um, yeah, so tremendous structure. They're much stronger than many other options like crates or sacks or jugs. And uh, they're... Uh, I'm gonna put some some pressure on your on your jugs with my... Uh, uh, I'm, too dis I'm too disoriented to tell a joke. I'm sorry, Shadow, I failed there. You did fail, but... I'll let him off the hook for that one. We've punished him enough this video. Um, so much stronger than other types of containers. And in a lot of measures, sometimes a lot easier to make, okay? You can make them with more basic, which is wood and rope and an ax. And, you know, if you know what you're doing, you, of course you need to know exactly the geometry you're going for and the methods of putting them together. But uh, once you know those, you know, they're, they're much they're much easier to make, to make than people think because some people think that the glue is required and things like that. It's like actually it's, it's all pressure um, holding these seams together, but also soaking and then drying to really close those seams. The advantage of it being round, uniform pressure as well. You can move much heavier weights. Uh, it gets the advantage of like this outwards facing kind of uh, arch. So it's like an arched kind of structure which increases strength even more, but then you can then move them around and roll them so much easier. And so, yeah, look at, in summary, these are all the benefits that you get out of barrels that I really think they're underappreciated. We should appreciate barrels more. Like, this is getting these barrels up and looking like, these things are great. Don't you think, Oz? No. Hey, Oz. A wasp is just floating right no! around. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, you pulled a quick one on me, you bugger. I did fart in here and it's not going away. Can I get out? <laughs> no, you can... Turn there! Suck it! Smell it! I'll smell it! So, it's actually far more science and engineering into the humble barrel than many people assume. And the people of the past, they were smart cookies, okay? And so, in some measures, we do fall and find the most optimal, you know, ways of doing things. Not always. Tradition can sometimes mess up innovation. But when we find something that works so well, we can stick with it for thousands of years and still use in the modern day. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. And of course, I hope to see you next time here on Shadowversity. Back down there. So until that time. <laughs>